All right, let's talk about conditional statements, also known as if statements. All right, a conditional statement in programming, and this is not just true of CMU Academy or just Python, pretty much all programming languages use conditional statements all the time. It's probably one of the most important concepts in all of programming that you'll use in pretty much every single program that you're ever going to write, right? Any interesting program that you're going to write anyway, right? So here's what a conditional is, right? It is a block of code, a piece of information that will only run when some certain criteria is met, okay? That certain criteria is called the condition, right? So in real life, you see this all the time, right? If I say, you know, if you are over 18, then you can vote. I've just set a condition on you being able to vote. Only people over the 18 are over are allowed, right? So that is a conditional statement, right? In Python, we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to format it a little differently, right? So you can see down here, right? I have a condition. I wrote the word if, and in a parentheses, I can put any condition I want. And my goal is to, to see if that condition that I put in the parentheses is true. I'm going to put a colon at the end to let Python know that I'm done my if statement. And then what I'm going to do is indent my block of code to let Python know that all of the indented block of code is the code that will only run if the condition's met. Then when I'm finished with my uh, indented code, I can unindent it and that lets Python know that I'm done with my conditional code. And that is the code that will run after my condition has been checked and run or not run, okay? Which again, when we see an example, I'll show you what that looks like, okay? All right, so let's continue. We're gonna take a look at uh, something that's important, right? If I'm gonna check a condition, I need some, some uh, conditional tests, right? So here's what conditional tests are, okay? Sometimes I wanna check to see if some value is less than another value. Is five less than seven? Is X less than two, right? So I can check less than and less than or equal to, greater than and greater than or equal to, which you've taken a math class you've seen before, okay? And then the two ones that, that you've, again, also seen, but are a little bit less obvious in Python uh, is the equal to and not equal to, right? So uh, if I want to write less than, I just use the less than symbol. If I want to write less than or equal to, I just write the symbol less than followed by the symbol equal to, okay? And then same thing for greater than and greater than or equal to, okay? For equals, and this is probably the strangest one, I need to use two equal signs. So if I wanted to say like, is the mouse... Uh, location equal to 200, right? I can't use one equal sign. I have to use two, okay? And I'll show you what, why that's true in a second. Essentially, a single equal sign has already been used uh, for variables and assigning variables, right? And that's the single equal sign. So if Python would be confused if we're trying to use a single equal sign for two different purposes, right? So because uh, we already have a, a use for a single equal sign, we're going to use two equal signs in a row to mean is one thing equal to another, Okay. In the same way, if I want to say something is something not equal to, right, is, uh, is the mouse location not equal to 200, right, then I'm going to use an exclamation point, right? An exclamation point is the Python way of saying the word not. So if I write an exclamation point followed by an equal sign, I'm asking the question, is one value not equal to another? Okay. So these are just some of the ways that you can ask uh, questions, you know, that we want to answer true or false and see if the condition has been met. Okay, there's a lot more, but this will this is where we're going to get started with. Okay, so here's a piece of example code. Okay, and we're going to go into the sandbox on CMU, and we're going to write uh, write this code out and just kind of see what happens, right? But the idea here is that um, I have a condition that says is the x value greater than 200, and only if that's true, this indented code will run. Okay, so I have two pieces of information that will run. I'm actually going to alter this a little bit, and I'm going to bump the star back. But let's take a look. I'm going to go to my uh, my uh, sandbox here and we're going to type this in so we're going to do def on mouse drag this is one of the uh, functions that you learned about uh, this unit i'm going to be a little bit more explicit with my parameters and i'm going to call the mouse x and mouse y remember the name of these values is not super important you can call them anything you want so instead of x and y i'm going to be a little bit more explicit okay so i'm going to hit enter and that takes me inside of the on mouse drag function okay so here's where my if statement comes in i'm going to say if the mouse x value is greater than 200, okay, then something's going to happen, okay? And if you're, let's think about what mouse X means. If this is a 400 unit canvas, it starts off at 0, 0 and goes over here to 400, 0. That means that 200 would be right in the middle. So if I'm saying is if the mouse X is greater than 200, I'm saying this code should only run if I'm on the right-hand side of the canvas, right, over here. If I'm on the left-hand side of the canvas, it shouldn't run, okay? So we're going to say that uh, we're going to draw this circle. The circle is going to have a center location of mouse X and mouse Y, 
okay? And we're gonna make it a little bigger. Let's make it like 30, okay? And we'll make the fill equal to red, okay? And so let's just run this and see what happens, okay? So I'm gonna hit run. Nothing's happening, nothing's happening because this is an on-mouse drag, right? So I have to click, okay, and drag. And you can see it's drawing a circle, but it's just drawing a bunch of circles, right? But let's just draw a real quick one. There you go. There's a quick circle for you, okay? If I do the same thing on the left-hand side of the canvas, right, where mouse X is not less than 200, that statement would be false, right? Like, for example, if I were to take this location here, if we go down to the bottom of the canvas, I can see my current mouse location. So if I'm over here where X value is, like, let's say 77, if I were to ask the question, is 77 greater than 200? Well, the answer to that is false, right? It's not greater than 200. So when I click and drag over here, right? Nothing's happening, right? And if you notice, take a look at that, that bottom right corner where the X value is. As I approach 200, the moment I hit 200, it starts working, right? So this condition is being checked every single time I drag my mouse. And this circle is only being drawn when I get to the right hand side of the canvas where it is true that the mouse's X value is greater than 200, okay? So I'm going to do the star now, right? So that's that's kind of the summary of the of the if statement, right? It's it's running the code or not running the code. Okay? So let's add the star in. So we're going to add in a star that is also going to be centered at mouse x and mouse y. Okay? And we're going to make it, uh, let's make it 10. Uh, we'll make it 30 as well. 30 radius, five point star. Okay? And this one's going to be fill equals blue. Okay. So if I do this, it just, uh, oop, my code there. Okay, so now if I run this, okay, you can see nothing's happening over here, right? Now if I go over here, you can see when I click, it is doing both of these things, right? So the circle and the star are both being run, and the reason for that is that the circle and the star, okay, are both indented, okay? They're at the same indent level, which means they are things that are going to run when this if statement is true, Okay. Anything that's at that level of indentation, if I were to add a label as well, maybe I'll do like label uh, at mouse x mouse, oh, we gotta put a label, uh, hello, okay, at mouse x mouse y, okay, oops. And if I run this, you can see that it also adds hello in there. It's a little tough to see, right? It's black, but uh, you get the idea is all of this code is indented at the same level. It's one indent away from the if, right? And so that means that it will all be run only when the mouse X is greater than 200. Okay, I'm gonna get rid of this label though, okay? If I take this star and I back it up, so if I hold down the shift key and hit the tab key, it will unindent, okay? And if I do this, here's what this is saying. Only the circle will be run, okay? Uh, will be executed when the mouse X is greater than 200. This star is now no longer part of the body of the if statement, it's not on the inside. And what that means is it's gonna run every single time. We are not checking this criteria to see if we should run the star, okay? So if you take a look at what happens, when I'm over here and I drag, okay? Oh, nothing's, I gotta hit run, that's why. Okay, when I'm over here on the right-hand side, I'm getting the star and the circle, okay? When I'm over here on the left, I'm still getting the star. And the reason for that is that the star is gonna run 100% of the time. There is no criteria that's telling me what should happen for the star, okay? So that's gonna run every single time, right? So this indentation is extremely important. When something's indented, it's a part of the condition, okay? And when it's not indented like this, okay? Now, okay, you can see that the stars are only being, are being run all the time. The circle is only being run when the condition is met, okay? So keep that in mind. If your code is not running as intended, check your indentation. That might be uh, what's going on, okay? And that's all that, in, that uh, conditionals are. We're going to talk about some more stuff in future videos that we can use to make this a little bit more complex, okay? But that's really all there is to it, okay? So if you found this useful, if you could like and subscribe, and if you want to comment below with any questions about specific exercises, I do monitor the comments, and I'm happy to help you out with those, right? Uh, and uh, in future videos, we'll continue talking about conditional statements, uh, and we'll expand on them and make them a little bit more interesting.